Samsung Galaxy Tab SA Ultra is actually quite a unique tablet. Yes, it's massive, sure, the size is a giveaway, but there's more to it than it meets the eye. I've been quite shocked by how much this tablet is able to do. And for $1,400, you kind of expect it to do more than a standard tablet. But we can pay more sometimes for an iPad or even a certain laptop and not get the same level of experience that the Tab SA Ultra delivers. I'm not suggesting that this tablet can replace every single device out there, but it's a pretty good contender for the right workflow. I actually went for the 8 gig RAM with 128 gig storage. Honestly, for what I do, which hopefully you'll see here today is a decent amount, this spec has been more than good enough. So if you're considering this device, this video will give you some ideas on how to use it and the sort of workflows that you're able to do. I can't cover every single use case out there, but hopefully you see that running my own business in tech consultancy, as well as creating content here on YouTube, we should cover quite a good range of apps and, and different workflows. And if you already got the Tab SA Ultra, this video might shed some light into some of the features that you may not have discovered yet and how these features can be used in your day-to-day -day life. Now, it's not all a bed of roses. There are a couple of issues with this tablet too, which I'll cover throughout the video. Is a bed of roses a good thing anyway? Sounds uncomfortable. I mean, it looks nice. When you talk about the Tab SA Ultra, the obvious thing to talk about is the display, but by now, you already know how amazing that is, right? And don't worry, I will cover that a bit later in the video as well. But in the last month and a half, what has really impressed me is the multitasking feature. There are some little touches and tweaks that Samsung have applied to this device that really allow me to use multiple apps and really make the most of how flexible this tablet is. And when you pair this device with another Android device like the S22 Ultra or the Google Pixel 6 Pro, the experience is even more fluid. As you'd expect, right? It's really hard, right? Not to draw any comparisons between this and the iPad Pro and the Apple ecosystem, but I'm trying to keep these comparisons to a minimum in this video. I've been trying to judge the Tab SA Ultra for what it really is, and the fact that I didn't return it says a lot about how much I really like this device. When using Samsung DeX, for example, there's so many cool things that I think are quite refreshing to see on a tablet. I know you can do some of this stuff on Samsung phones as well, like DeX is on the S22 Ultra and even on all the devices, but it's a huge bonus to be able to do all of this and have this massive display as well. I really think DeX is, is just an underrated feature for me. You can resize windows, have multiple apps open, and not feel restrained by you know, where you place them, how big they can be, and how many you can have. You know, One thing I do wish would work better is the interaction between the apps. And I understand that technically, this must be quite a challenge. And if that's something that you really value, you know, being able to copy and paste between apps in DeX and move things around between apps, then something like a Microsoft Surface or any other laptop might be a better option for you. I don't mind that because usually what I do doesn't really require that interaction too often. And if I really want to do something a little bit more involved, then I would go for my MacBook Pro anyway. But I just love how I can take this device anywhere to a cafe, to, to the beach if I wanted to, and do so much with it whilst working remotely. It has a decent battery life as well. It will definitely last all day. It could be better, right? It could always be better. But lasting all day with such a big display for me is a big bonus. And one thing I did notice, which is really impressive, is not actually how the battery is spent when you're using it, but when you're not using the device, you know, the standby battery consumption is really, really good. I mean, it really doesn't drop at all. I haven't noticed not even like maybe 1% overnight. My iPads definitely lose more battery than that when it's idle. One of the absolute joys of this device is actually the accessory that comes with it, the S Pen, very underrated accessory. Not to mention that it comes with the tablet, right? You don't have to go and buy it separately like you do with the Apple Pencil. This combination of the S Pen and the Tab SA Ultra, you know, it's really, really soft. It has a ton of features as well that you can configure such as actions, including gestures to unlock the device. It has an actual button as well. I know the Apple Pencil, you can sort of tap it and do things like that, but it's really nice to have even more options to configure what this button does. I really encourage you to spend some quality time there setting it up for your, for your taste because it is really quite powerful. I didn't buy the big half a terabyte version because I'll be honest with you, I was planning to just do a couple of videos on it and then return it, but I ended up really liking this device. And it seems that you like these videos too, so I decided to keep it. On the back of my mind when I was buying this, I was also considering the fact that I can use external storage. 
and more importantly, what I learned from being ripped off by Apple, uh, you know, my own fault by, you know, believing their, their marketing. But I bought the 16 gig RAM, for example, and the one terabyte iPad. And let me tell you, it's been over a year now and there hasn't been one occasion where I thought to myself, I'm glad I went for that spec, you know? So yeah, it was definitely a ripoff. Using external storage is a breeze on the Tab S8 Ultra, you know, either connecting an SSD drive or using a hub or, you know, even using the internal micro SD card that you, you can just add another one terabyte to it. When it comes to cameras, I don't really talk too much about cameras on, you know, on tablets. I think it's, you know, it's one of those things. But the Tab S8 Ultra actually changed my perception of that. Not because of the cameras at the back, which are excellent by the way, but because of the front facing camera more specifically where it's located. This has been a criticism of mine and I've seen other people complaining about that as well. On the iPad, for example, and other tablets, you've got this useless thing on the side, right? And I know it's gotten a little bit better now with center stage and it follows you around, but I prefer the camera in the center of the screen, not moving at all, you know, and makes it for a less disconcerting experience, in my case anyway, you know, I, I know I'm probably old school, I just don't like the camera following me around. I just think it's awkward enough to be on camera for so long these days, you know, you're missing a lot of the interactions that you have in person. So having a camera that is decent quality in the, in the right place is really a nice change for me. So thank you Samsung for finally doing that. Yes, you added a notch, as a result, I think I've, I think we've all got used to notches now. What's the Wi-Fi like? Well, whether I'm using a public Wi-Fi or my own at home, the Tab S8 Ultra has been extremely stable. In the last month and a half, there was one occasion where I was at a cafe and it suddenly dropped connection. It didn't just lose Wi-Fi, which was interesting. You know, I couldn't connect to my phone as well as a hotspot. I reboot fixed it. I haven't seen that problem again in that month and a half. You know, it, it did happen once. So I'm putting it down to one of those things that just happens once in a blue moon. I watched a couple of videos where people say, in some cases quite passionately about how this device is hard to fit into bags and, and they're too big. This is my kid's tiny backpack here. And this is my 20 liter camera bag, which is very compact as well. Absolutely no problem. You know, it is bigger than certain laptops, but it's certainly no bigger than a MacBook Pro, for example. I'm not in denial here saying that this is not a massive tablet. It is but it's very thin, ridiculously thin, and very narrow as well, which, which I really like, especially for watching content. But yeah, it will fit in any bag, don't worry about that. The main gripe I do have with these devices is actually nothing to do with Samsung, is the accessory makers out there, right? They're not really making anything specifically for the Tab S8 of, of high quality, you know, nothing from people like Logitech, for example, or other kind of respectful brands out there. I did a review of a few accessories that I did find, and I'll leave a link to it down below for you. But as I sit here today, that's like Amber Heard, isn't it? As you sit there today, as I'm sitting here today, there's no choices, right, of really decent accessories. I'm making do with some stuff that is for the iPad, actually. Um, but yeah, choices are very limited right now. In terms of software, this is May 2022. I'm running One UI 4.1 and Android 12, of course. Honestly, Android has become a lot friendlier in the last few years, right? And I think that's true here as well for the Tab S8 Ultra. Android 12 lends itself really well for a tablet experience. Some apps are a little bit quirky still, and that's a nature of Android apps that don't get really designed for Android tablets. Some of them do actually now, but yeah. But what I really like about Android is how if you really want to, you can dive deeper into the settings and really customize your experience, get quite kind of geeky in a way there, in a way that Apple really doesn't allow you to. iOS and iPadOS are trying to bring some features to help with that, but to really customize it, you're still quite limited on iPads and iPhones. Don't get me wrong, the experience is very smooth and fluid on the iPhone and the iPad, but I think it's nice to kind of make it your own, as it were. I'm definitely not an expert in Android apps and I'm still learning my way in customizations and things like that, but I can definitely see how much power we have in comparison with the iPad OS. I know, I know iPad OS have a lot more apps that are designed from the ground app for tablets. And you could argue that it has a smoother experience as a result. I'm not disputing that, but the more I use the Tab S8 Ultra, the more I realize that the iPad OS argument is getting weaker actually, you know, Apple has got some work to do here. With any new device, uh, we need a bit of time, right? To let it bed in, to let it mold into our lives. I'm starting to sound really cheesy here, but 
I truly believe that. Ostensibly, I'm an Apple user, but in the last couple of years, I've been honestly impressed by Android devices. Now, the S21 Ultra, I've changed to last year. The S22 Ultra this year, maybe not so much, but the Pixel 6 Pro, really impressive device as well on Android. And I'm not gonna pretend here that I switched everything to Android and everything that Apple does is terrible. It's kind of true though, isn't it? But I do have a different appreciation for Android devices that, you know, that, that are coming through now. And I, and I don't think I had any appreciation at that same level two years ago, say. And the Type S8 Ultra is certainly becoming one of my favorite Android devices ever. I enjoyed catching up with you and sharing my experience on this device so far. I'll make sure to keep this playlist over here up to date, so check out for accessories and apps videos. And I think you're really gonna like this video that I did over here. See you soon.